It's been said that birds of a feather flock together, and now the same can be said of their owners. Meet the members of Hoosier Feathered Friends, a group brought together by their love of exotic birds. But it's not just flighty fun. There's an informational agenda on tap, too. It is a very big commitment. Many, many years. Many, many years. Uh, cockatoo? Uh, no, this is a macaw, sorry. You're learning, you're learning. I'm lear learning, I'm learning. I don't know much about birds. Yes, I'm learning. Uh, but they can live a long time. Um, somewhere probably between 40 and 100 years. That's a long time. Yeah. What do you suggest people do if they decide they want to make that commitment? Uh oh, speaking speaking of commitments. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. Hi there. How are you? You want to talk to the camera? Put the microphone in. You don't like the microphone? No. I didn't either like at first. That's okay. <laughs> when you get a bird like Shawnee over here that's plucked and he screams a lot, so people don't always want to keep the birds. And I want to take a look and you can see this is Shawnee and Shawnee has plucked his feathers out of his tummy. He's also plucked the feathers from his back due to stress and he's lost some toes as well. What happened there? Well we don't know. Um, his records go back to 1998 for other rescues and he was already missing the toes at that point. Oh, no. So we're not sure what happened to his toes. But they were surgically removed so it was a vet visit. But, but he's getting along fine now. He is getting along fine now. He has a little trouble with balance but that's okay. Well <laughs> so do I. So there you go. But there's a common bond evident among all. A love for these beautiful birds. We're here with Raymond, and your bird is? Sam. And you've had Sam for a long time. Sam, I've had Sam for probably 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. How long, this is a gray? African gray, Congo African gray. How long do they live? Um, upwards to 80 years or more. Yeah. Okay, well, Raymond, now we people don't live as long. Right. What are you going to do when the I, time comes? I have nieces and nephews that hopefully I can get into wanting to birds and okay. taking them for me when, you know, when the time comes. Okay. Why do you love birds? I don't know. It's just something that started, you know, like I said, he started with uh, my love for big parrots. So, you know, it's just the the trust that they have. Howard's here with an African gray, and what's the one? Is that a parakeet? Uh, that is a cockatiel. That's a cockatiel? Yes, oh, okay. A subspecies, but yes. All right, I'm learning. I'm learning all about birds. Uh, tell me why you love birds. Uh, your personality. Um, they bond for life, and... Um, even when you're having a bad day, the bird gives you a smile. You come home, she says, hi, baby, whistles at you, and things like that. So, yeah, no matter how bad your day is at work, the bird's there. And says she hello. whistles at you? Whistles at me, tells me hello, yells at my dogs, barks. Bottom line, do your homework, no matter what the background of the bird, because they all have different needs and personalities, too. You know, I think birds make great pets for kids, especially like the cockatiels. I think that's the best bird that a kid can start with. Cockatiels are very forgiving, so if the little kids are a little too rough with it, the, the, they take it in stride as opposed to the big birds that, you know, they're going to quickly get turned off of the small children. And let's not forget, they're very smart as well. So next time someone calls you a bird brain, perhaps you should take it as a compliment. <laughs> Good boy. Hola. Hola. Good boy.